station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 9 o'clock, covering the entire DMV. It's Sunday, November the 5th. A federal officer shot and killed the fatal accident by a colleague. Hands were up. He's like, no weapon, no weapon. Didn't even hear a gunshot, which is the wildest thing. What we've learned on the ground in Fairfax County. And Election Day looms. The high stakes races in the DMV just days away. Some votes already cast, others yet to be cast too. And a W for Washington. How the commander's close score finish against New England fares for the team's future. And temperatures this weekend were fairly mild across the area. Will that trend continue into a new work week? Stick around for that and I'll let you know when we'll see some rain back in the picture. Thank you, Scott. Good evening, and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9. I'm Ben Dennis. Top story tonight, a U.S. Park police officer remains in custody tonight. That's after he was accused of a deadly shooting at a McLean apartment building. and happened just before 1230 this morning on Old Meadow Road. That's where Dave Laval brings us the latest details. Fairfax County investigators do not believe a U.S. Park police officer meant to shoot a fellow officer inside a second floor apartment here at the Ryland. But it did happen and it cost that officer his life. Didn't even hear a gunshot, which is the wildest thing. Michael Houck among those shocked by what happened inside this building early Sunday morning where Houck lives. We didn't hear anything, but which is good to have a seven month old child and she slept through it. At least she's thankful for that. Investigators told us 25 year old Alexander Roy shot and killed 22 year old Jesse Hernandez. Both are officers with the U.S. Park Police. They're among three off duty officers inside the apartment. It's crazy because we didn't want her walking home at night and then we got here to all the chaos and it was wild. Steve Ebmeyer and Greg Taggart visited Hauk from Detroit. We saw the uh, one friend coming down. His hands were up. He's like, no weapon, no weapon. Investigators said Roy attempted to do what's known as dry fire a gun. That's when someone fires the weapon they believe is unloaded. People like that have a lot of training with it, so you would, you would assume that that would not happen in a scenario like this. Investigators said alcohol was involved. U.S. Park Police declined to discuss what happened, but did say in an email Sunday, quote, our focus right now is on supporting the family, friends and co-workers of our employees involved in this tragic incident. Prosecutors charged Roy with involuntary manslaughter. He remains held without bond at the Fairfax County Adult Detention Center. In McLean, Dave Laval, DC News Now. Our thanks to Dave in Fairfax tonight. Meantime, DC police say the two men are dead after a car crash in Northeast. Officials say that this happened around 1.30 this afternoon at the intersection of Old 35th and Bladensburg in Northeast. Two men were found on the scene, not conscious and breathing. They were later declared dead. Police are still investigating that case. And Maryland State Police have identified the four people who died in a car crash in Carroll County. This is Yesterday evening, officials say that Charles Black III, Barbara Black, and Debbie Hill of New Windsor, Maryland died on scene. Police also say a 17-year-old Gage Black of New Windsor, Maryland, also died of his injuries after being sent to a local hospital. That crash had closed westbound lanes of Liberty Road near Skidmore Road for several hours overnight. That investigation is still ongoing. And Montgomery County police say that a man is dead and another injured after a shooting at a White Oak shopping center last night. Officials say it happened just before 6 o'clock at the shopping center off New Hampshire Avenue. Two men were transported to a local hospital. One of them died. The other still in critical condition. Police say that they don't have any suspects in custody at this hour. And in the district, thousands of pro-Palestinian protesters took to the National Mall near the White House yesterday. But some decided to tag local businesses. You can see spray paint on this McDonald's here. DC police report minor incidents of property damage and vandalism along 17th Street in Northwest. Police also investigate acts of vandalism near the McPherson Square Metro Station. The group speaking out against Israeli airstrikes in Gaza and calling for a ceasefire. And health officials say that Israeli airstrikes have hit two refugee camps in central Gaza. This says the U.S. keeps urging Israel to take a humanitarian pause on their airstrikes. But meantime, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu insists there will not be a ceasefire until all Israeli hostages are released by Hamas.
Your time is 9.05. We're going to get over to meteorologist Scott Sumner in just a moment. But first, a live look across the DMV in Annapolis, Winchester, Virginia, Hagerstown, the dual highway there, and Washington, D.C., the nation's capital. Beautiful shot of the Washington Monument there. Scott Sumner with the latest. Scott, it was a darker beginning of the day. A new dawn is on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to rhyme and say he's on the way. You know, day, way. I'll okay. save the rhymes for later, man. Save the line, rhymes for later. <laughs> yes, indeed. I, I'm the alliteration guy after all sometimes. All right. Uh, here we go. 59 degrees. Clear skies out there. We've got a light north and northwest uh, breeze at about 9 miles an hour. Yeah, the sun set tonight at 5.04, and it's going to get shorter and shorter by the time we get into the end of this month. Sunset time is going to be around 4.45 here around Thanksgiving. Yeah, well, we'll get that trend reversed soon enough. Hey, uh, we have high pressure around today, uh, beautiful weather. A couple little clouds drifting in, potentially from uh, Pennsylvania and Ohio, but we'll go with mostly clear skies tonight. There could be even a little bit of patchy valley fog out there during the course of your early morning, so be careful if you do run into a little fog on your Monday driving into work. Breakfast forecast shows temperatures are going to be on the chilly side. You'll have your jacket. Jackets needed, uh, you know, here with temperatures into the lower 40s under mostly clear skies. By the time we hit 10 o'clock mid morning or so, we're looking at double nickel air 55 degrees. And as far as the headlines, clear skies, like I said, fog overnight tonight. Up and down temperatures this week. We'll show it to you coming up. Scott, thank you. And DC News Now is your local election headquarters. Come Tuesday, you're going to want to watch for those returns, including pivotal races in the Commonwealth. Control of the entire Virginia General Assembly is up for grabs. The GOP currently has control in the House of Delegates, while Democrats have a slim hold in the Senate. The governor's post, however, is not up for grabs. Here's how some issues voters find important could prompt turnout this year. There's a lot at stake. We're going to be seeing a litmus test of an issue set between largely abortion and the issue of crime, as well as other issues like parents' rights and education, playing out ahead of Tuesday and into next year as well. Early voting has wrapped up, but polls will open in Virginia Tuesday morning for specific schedules. Just search your local registrar's office on the Virginia Elections website. That link right there on your screen. Mail-in ballots can still be sent in, but they must be postmarked no later than Tuesday. And in sports, the Washington Commanders traveled to Foxborough, Massachusetts to face off against the New England Patriots just this afternoon. They were looking to get into the win column after losing two straight. The commanders, led by quarterback Sam Howell, threw over 320 yards and a touchdown. Running back Brian Robinson Jr. rushed for a touchdown as well. The game officially sealed by Jotavius Martin's interception late in the fourth quarter. The commanders come out of the game with the win, a tight 20-17 W. This is the first time the commanders have beaten the Patriots in Foxborough since 1996. Here's head coach Ron Rivera with more following the big win. You know, I thought the receivers, you know, made the plays that they had to. Um, you know, there, there were a couple stretches where Jahan really came up and, you know, did his thing. And then and then you watch and, and Terry stepped up in the second half and he, he did a couple of big things that were explosive for us. Um, and and when, when guys all contribute, you know, we ran the ball hard. We really did. Our, our running backs all ran hard. You know, that's why we, we, we want a kid like that in this, in this offense, because when there's balance and we run the ball like that, it, you can you can be successful. And, and EB knows that. And, and so it was good to see that as well. So, so many guys contributed. So many players did the job that they needed to do to give us a chance to win today. And Ravens fans, we've got you covered later in the newscast. The breakdown of that convincing win at home against the Seahawks in our next half hour. Turning now, there's no shortage of family-friendly fem events across the DMV that can help you stretch your dollar, especially if you're a parent. Our Tanaya Wright talked to the creator of Virginia Adventure Family about her Instagram account. It's designed to help families find fun things to do. Life's hard enough as a parent, so being an additional resource is my goal. Zoe Johnson, the creator of Virginia Adventure Family, started her social media account as a COVID hobby. If I'm putting a lot of work into like finding activities and things to do for my kids and my family that we enjoy, 
there's probably other people who are trying to find the same things. On her Instagram account, Johnson features family friendly events across Northern Virginia and the DMV. One of our favorite free activities is the Udvar Hazy Center. It's an extension of the Air and Space Museum, the Smithsonian one um, in DC. It's an actual huge hangar. It's next to the Dulles Airport and you can go in and see a huge array of airplanes, more than just airplanes, aircrafts. There's a huge observation deck. You can watch the airplanes as they come and go from Dulles Airport. Um, they do story time for kids as well. My kids love it. Johnson said parking is $15, but if you go after 4 p.m., parking is free. Another spot we love is the Hidden Oaks Nature Center, and that's in Annandale. And it's more than just a nature center. It's a whole park and it's got the indoor features with some animals, a lot of activities for little kids. Outside there's what they call the nature place and it's a nature playground. There's some trails, there's also a regular playground. It's fantastic. It turned into way more than I kind of expected to, which is really exciting. A lot of fun. Thanks to tonight for sharing that story. 30 now we're previewing Veterans Day just six days away. The National Park Service also wants to help you celebrate. Their website, nps.gov, offers a tool to help you find events near you. Sort by date, national park, state, and even event types, such as a festival or a guided tour. And taking a look at some of the events across the DMV offered, you can check out Shenandoah National Park in Virginia for free on the 11th. That's between noon and midnight. In D.C., check out the World War II Memorial on the National Mall for Veterans Day on Saturday as well. That starts at 9 in the morning. And in Maryland, Fort McHenry in Baltimore is hosting free guided tours and seminars on Saturday starting at 10 a.m. And Metro is celebrating veterans this month with specially wrapped trains. Check this out right here, honoring Veterans Day, decked out in red, white, and blue. The design features an American flag, the message proud to serve those who served our country. Those trains have already hit the track starting yesterday, and they'll run until the end of the month. And this Veterans Day also marks the 30th anniversary of the Vietnam Women's Memorial. According to the National Park Service, it was dedicated in 1993. It depicts three women caring for a fallen soldier. It serves to highlight women who served during the war as nurses, physicians, air traffic controllers, and communications specialists.